Hello and welcome to the EMP Tech Group. Uh, today we're kind of in the nerve center of the EMP Tech Group in an area that uh, that people don't see very often. Uh, we're usually downstairs in our shop where we do uh, production work and assembly and stuff like that. But we're up today where Chris Compton lives, uh, kind of up in the uh, tech services area. A lot of our customer support is done in this area. Uh, one of Chris's many jobs uh, here at EMP Tech Group is to do um, customer applications for mobile computers using a, uh, a software uh, product called MCL. And uh, it's one of our secret weapons. You hear me say secret weapons on these videos a lot. And um, it is one of our secret weapons. And we're kind of divulging this to you because some, some companies would try to hide this and use it, but we want everybody to know about it. So MCL, Chris, is a rapid uh, development software package uh, that you can use. And then you put the MCL uh, client on the device you can write an application really quickly on your PC, put it on the on the on the mobile computer, and then the customer's up and running really fast. And uh, one that we've done a lot of is a, a, a match code application. So why don't you show us a little bit about how you develop this application, what that looks like, and then we'll look at it on the device itself. Yeah. So from a development standpoint, uh, one of the main things is you select the device type. Um, if it's a generic device, you can set up generic devices, even Windows computers. Uh, but if you can tell it what the device is and they've developed an actual program for it, it'll preset the display settings and it will automatically preset what internals it has. So RFID, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, or cellular. By the way, almost all Android at this point, right? Yes. We used to use this on Windows Mobile, Windows CE, but those devices are long gone. So everything now is, this wouldn't work on an iOS device, for example. No. Okay, so all if it's an Android device, and as we've seen, even if it's not yet supported by MCL, we can sometimes we can still get, get it to yeah, work. Yeah, we'll create yeah. a generic client. And yeah. then on Windows like 10, you can also run this. So okay. Windows 10 or newer. Okay, nice. Um, which we have one installed on actual Windows computers running really well. So Android TC2126, one of those devices, right? Yeah, this okay. is a TC21 in okay. this specific instance. Could be an MC9300, could be a lot of Zebra devices. Yeah, yeah. Honeywell, lots okay. of they have lots of connections. Okay, great. So uh, once you set up what the device is, typically if you're going to be scanning, you're going to come in here, uh, set up some scanner profiles, maybe change it, what barcodes I'm going to scan, what barcodes I don't want it to be able to scan, those type of things. Um, you know, if it has RFID, I'm going to set up RFID profile so that I can scan RFID stuff. Uh, or NFC. This actually does do NFC touch. Nice. So if you were trying to go through a door or something, it could do an NFC touch. Hot button or, RFID, passive RFID right now. I kind of yeah. forgot to mention that. You can use this for RFID applications yep. as well. Very nice. much so. Great. So then if I'm going to connect to databases, I'm going to set up a database connection. Same as a web service. Uh, we have done several programs recently where I'm actually talking to a RESTful API on the internet and I'm just requesting information and then the information is coming back to me and I'm displaying it for the operator. Okay, great. So once you do all that, um, you're going to come in here, you're going to get displays and I'm going to set up pages with displays. So in this case, it's pretty simple. This specific program, I have one field that I've set up as a scanner field. I tell it that it can be between two digits and 50 digits. And then essentially once it scans, you can set up any number of hundreds, if not thousands of different options. It can do pretty much anything. I can look up database fields. I can do verification, which is what I'm gonna show you here in a minute. It can pretty much do anything. So in this case, it's just gonna to go to the next page. And on the next page, what it's gonna do is quite a few things. You'll see it's gonna run some different things. So I'm gonna verify once you scan that it matches that first barcode. The criteria. That's it. Yeah. Okay, got it. And you're checking the criteria. That yeah. It's between three and 50 digits. Yes, that it's exactly. Maybe even a certain barcode symbology. Yep, I can do that. Uh, we, we do do that in some cases where we know for a fact that they want to know what barcode type they're scanning. Okay. So great. I can do all of that. Uh, then I'm going to beep, and then I'm going to verify, uh, which is easier to show on the device. The, the nice thing about this program, the, what makes it so easy, is not only is it mostly display and then I'm just building basically a stepladder program, is that it has an emulator built in. So basically any program I want, I can get it to show me what I'm doing. You could do a nice splash screen that shows EMP Tech Group on it, yep. things like that. Nice. Yep. So if I type in one, two, three, four, five, six, I can test whether my program's working on this emulator before I even make it to this device. 
and then I can test on the device to make sure there's no other functionality. Sometimes, you know, there might be a display issue or something to that effect. So something to talk about. So we're doing a mass code application here. Mm -hmm. I scan a master. A lot of times we'll see people do this where it's, it's a case barcode and a product barcode. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I, as a QC check, I'm going to scan the, the part number off the case, pull one of the items, scan that, make sure that the right product got packed into the right case. So Correct. real straightforward one. But this could be a receiving or a picking or some warehouse function yeah. or multiple warehouse functions that you can write in this application and talk back to their backend system. Yeah, so we have programs that are talking back to a backend. So we are it's typically SQL. So okay. typically I will, let's say you have a job order. So you scan the job order. What I do is I go look up in the table and I actually bring down the items that should be in that job order, right? Okay. Because they're not gonna match. So then I put that in a table on the device, and then as you scan those items, I can verify, check them off, and say, yes, you've loaded this or uh, you know, moved that product. Okay, great, great. Yeah. Cool, so without going too deep into it, that's kind of the, the functionality. We've had customers who haven't done programming in years, and they've looked at this and said, wow, I kind of don't even remember how to program, but I could do this. I mean, this is yeah. simple enough. And you're not one of our programmers. You're not yeah. one of our full-time coders. You're one of our technology guys for sure, but you don't have to be a full-time coder to do this work either. No, if you asked me to do VB programming or web programming, it would not be yeah, a good idea. Quit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> be bad. Okay, so let's. we're, we're gonna to try to show the device a little bit here and just kind of show what this looks yeah. like. And I know you've got some barcodes down here set up, so yeah. I'll kind of get out of the way. So in this case, I'm going to go into the program, but now that my device actually has a scanner, I can turn on the scanner. I can scan the barcode. As you see, I have a reference. That's your master. Yep, that's my master. Okay. So if I scan the barcode again, I'm going to get a green path. Nice. But if I scan the wrong product, I'm going to get, and it actually does tell you what I scanned wrong. Um, we do a lot of these programs where I'm actually counting so you'll, you're actually verifying a quantity. So you say, I want to scan 10 of these. At 10, I'll tell you you're done. Um, or if you scan nine and you try to exit the program, you'll say you haven't scanned all of your products. Please you know, find the last product. Nice, nice. Um, so we do a lot of that also. Perfect. Well, that's what we wanted to try to convey. Again, pretty deep, and we wanted to kind of do a, a high-level review of what this is all about. I'll, I'll dive into one more thing about MCL and why we like it, because it's not a very well-known product. Oh, by the way, it's not very expensive. Oh, by the way, there's no server licensing that has to go on. Other products that are rapid app development, you've got some kind of a server element. You got to pay a lot of money for that. You got to buy really expensive client licenses that are hundreds, if not thousands of dollars each. And so by the time you pay for all that, and you still have to develop the application, even though it's a lot faster. Yeah. But with MCL, it's all very reasonably priced. We got I'd say we have well over 100 applications out there running oh, this. Yeah, easily. Yeah. The, the only thing um, is if you're talking directly to a database, there is MCL net. Okay. That is an attachment. But the easiest way to get around that, what we found is that if you write a stored procedure or a RESTful API, you now have no, there's no middleman okay. at all. But I will say the MCL net is very useful in troubleshooting because the information is always on a server, so I can actually see the throughput completely. So it's very, very easy to troubleshoot. Cool. Well, look, when we're talking to customers about, I gotta get a mobile computer in my operations, I gotta do barcode scanning. Yeah. Our first answer is, does your, does your software you have today do the work that you need? Does it have the screens that would render on this device and we can just use your software? Yeah. No. Okay, can we use something like MCL to get it done? Usually, yeah, but sometimes no. And if no, then we have to write a full custom application for it. But yeah. we have this MCL tool because we want to do what's best for the customer. And sometimes that's a much, much better, quicker, easier, faster way to get the job done. Yeah, I mean, I mean honestly, what we've found is typically something I'm writing in a couple of days would take a full development uh, within two to three weeks. Yeah. I mean, in, so in our experience. Five to 10 times faster to do yeah. it this way, yeah. And by the way, if you got six or seven apps you need to run on this thing, you can write those without, yep. yeah. Yep. Cool, very good. All right, emptechgroup.com, always the best place to find us. Thank you. Mm -hmm.